Assalamu alaikum. I am Muhammad Shahadat Hussain, Associate Professor, Department of English, Dhaka College. Dear students of honors, first year, English Department, how are you? I think we are passing through a very tough and critical time because of the pandemic. Every moment we are passing a time of tension and fear. Every day we are counting the number of the dead and new infection. The World Health Organization has declared that the disease will linger and until effective new vaccine is invented. So we have to cope, cope up with this situation and we have to explore new avenues, innovative techniques so that we can continue our studies. Our education ministry have already instructed to take online classes and with the inspiration of our principal sir, Professor Nehal Ahmed, we have already started online classes for HSC students and at present we are taking, arranging classes for the honors and masters student. Today, my class is with honors first year students. Today our topic is a short story of Ernest Miller Hemingway. The story is title is The Snows of Kilimanjaro. We will focus on the plot and its theme. Before discussing the theme, I want to mention the epigraph that is added at the beginning of the story. Epigraph is a short introduction at the beginning of a story or a book that introduces the theme of a book or the story, theme of a story. Here the epigraph is mentioned at the beginning. I have a collection of Hemingway's short story. The title of this book is The Snow of Kilimanjaro and Other Stories. And the Snows of Kilimanjaro is the first story of this book. And before the title, uh, before the title we have an epigraph. And the epigraph, I am reading the epigraph quickly. Kilimanjaro is a snow covered mountain, 19,710 feet high. And is said to be the highest mountain in Africa. Its western summit is called the Masai, Engazi, Engai, the house of God. Close to the western summit, there is the dried and frozen carcass of a leopard. No one has explained what the leopard was seeking at that altitude. So the title Climenjaro comes from this description. And we can also have idea of the theme of this story. It describes the carcass of a dead leopard which is dried and frozen. And it is at the western summit of the mountain that is known as Masai. Engazi, Engai, the local people of Kenya. The mountain is situated in Kenya and Tanzania, 
but where this setting of this story it is on the side of Kenya near Nairobi the capital city of Kenya so here we see that at the top of the mountain in the western part that is known as Maasai there is a dried and frozen carcass of a leopard that implies the death of an animal a leopard and it is frozen and we see that the writer expresses wonder what the leopard was seeking there in such high place so mountain has a different significance we know mountain in various culture in various countries races considered to be the uh, house of god for example to the hebrew people sinai mountain is the house of god or to the japanese people fuji is the house of god or to the greek people it is the olympus mountain is the kingdom of gods so here the leopard was seeking something in the kingdom of god it implies immortality here uh, the dead leopard the dried and frozen carcass introduces the theme of death at the same time it is the kingdom of the gods that implies immortality so we are introduced to the theme of immortality or the theme of death as well the theme of the story is the approaching death of its death of the protagonist harry and we are also introduced to another character his wife helen at the beginning of the story we are not introduced to the to this main character the protagonist harry and his wife helen we are introduced to the conversation of two characters a male and a female character and we come to know that the male character is seriously in some trouble and very soon we come to know that harry is suffering from gangrene and this gangrene is developing very quickly and harry is approaching to his death we need introduction of this two character harry Harry is a promising writer. He based in Paris, but now, after getting married to his rich wife, who had been a widow, Helen, her husband died at an age when she was comparatively young. After the death of her first husband, we see that she devoted her. to develop two sons while they grown up after they have grown up we see that the son felt it that they do not they did not need her any more and they rather felt embarrassed about uh, to her stable of horses to books and to bottles that means drink so she felt her life became troublesome because of this situation in the family and she would drink heavily for sleep and after that she manages some lovers and after having lovers she would not take drink for sleep but after the death of her younger son in a plane crash 
she suddenly discovered that she is terribly alone and she felt frightened and in this situation we see that she got acquainted to Harry, this writer in Paris. She liked everything. She had studied some works of Harry and she liked them. She felt that she, Harry did those things that she really longed for. And she felt that Harry was someone whom she actually respect. And we see that after acquaintance they got married. After marriage, Helen allowed Harry to spend the money she had. And they have come to Africa to visit the continent and we see that they have arrived at the, this place of Kenya at the foot of the mountain of Kilimanjaro and they are Harry and Helen got stranded as a result of They, as a result of a of an accident, mechanical failure, we see that the truck they were traveling stuck at that point when the bearing of the truck burned. They could not continue their journey. When the story started, it is afternoon, and they had been waiting here for two weeks. Harry got infected as a result of a scratch, pricking of some thorn while he was taking some photograph of some water bag and he had no idea of infection so he didn't care for the scratch and he didn't use iodine as antiseptic and later his leg got swollen and the gangrene developed when the minute blood vessel uh, are destroyed or destroyed the gangrene developed. As the story started, we see that Harry and Helen have conversation and Harry saw the vulture gathered around the camp, around the safari. They are staying and this vulture, they are staying here. They were staying here for two weeks and now the vulture gathered in large number. Earlier they had been circling over the camp and now they perched heavily on the trees and some of them are now moving around the camp. Harry is surprised either the scent of his leg or anything else brought this vulture. Vulture we know is a symbol of death because they are a scavenger and carry on eater. Here it seems that Harry is about to die and the vulture will have his carrion or his dead body. So the theme of the story is Harry's approaching death. In this situation we see Hemingway's protagonists are set in such situation of life and death. They encounter death face to face and they behave in this situation, their behavior, their manner, that is the focus of the story. Here we see Harry is in a combative mood with his wife Helen. She cons he considered that his 
uh, sorry, her money is responsible for this situation. Harry is in quarrel with Helen and blamed Helen that it was her money that was responsible for this situation. She called, he called it bloody money. And we see that when Harry is so aggressive, so combative, Helen simply replies that it is unfair. And she pointed out that it was her money as well as it was Harry's. He has allowed him to use the money as he wished. And he accompanied him wherever Harry went. So he should not blame him for it. And he should think of the present situation. Helen's concern is how to help Harry in this situation, in this critical moment. She rather thinks, gives optimistic, utters optimistic word that some rescue plane will arrive and they will be able to go to Nairobi and her bad, his bad leg will be good or will be all right. But we see Harry did not believe it. He thinks, he thought that he is going, to, he was going to die. So Harry is very angry. On the one hand, he, he is angry because he could not develop his career as a writer. He had at least 20 topics to write with, some of which he has mentioned in the story. The story has six sections and we notice that each section, in each section the author inserted a flashback. This, in this flashback the author described Harry's past life, his experiences that he gathered to write in future. Harry muses on this matter and we find that the author has juxtaposed past and present. Past is present, represented as something glorious, promising, and present is something unhappy, painful, and ha harrowing. So we see that this situation, these two things, caused serious tension and a conflicting situation in Harry. She continuously blamed, used, uttered, uh, she, uh, he uttered ill words and even called her a rich beach. But Helen maintained her passions. She assures us that he will not die until he gives up. And we see that Harry Says, said that he was going to die. And the vulture's presence implies that he was going to die. He addressed the vulture as bloody bastard. Bloody or bastard. And we see that Harry believed that it is meaningless to have hope at this situation and to maintain this passions and accept the suggestion given by Helen and we see that at this when a person faces his death he can see his life more clearly and more truly than he could realize he realized that he was going to die so he asked for drink whiskey soda and he expressed his desire to have drink continuously. We see that Helen went to hunt a deer, a gazelle, 
that is mentioned in the story as Tommy and she prepared broth, some broth that can, if Harry took the broth, that would give him a strength or improve his condition, but Harry is unwilling to take the broth. He rather pointed out that to die he needs no strength. And we see in this way Harry continuously blamed Helen, her money, her pattern of life for his artistic failure. It is commonly referred to Hemingway that a number of things that destroy an artist's career, these are money, women, drink, ambition, politics. But here we see that the protagonist has destroyed his career from luxury and procrastination. He thought that it is Helen's money responsible for it. But in the next part we see that Harry and Helen are in a compromising mood at least for the time being, Harry maintained her uh, mood, temper and outwardly becomes very friendly to Helen. Earlier he had said that he didn't love Helen and he was very angry but now he promised that he, is, he loved her and he loved her more than any other girl in the past. But in reality we see that actually Harry destroyed his career himself. He has destroyed it by laziness, slothfulness, by pride and by prejudice or by hook and crook. He himself is responsible for his career for the destruction of his career. But we see at this situation when he is going to die, he contrasts his past life that are mentioned in the flashbacks. In one flashback we see that he described the story of a tourist boy who was assigned with the responsibility to guard a farmhouse when another mean-spirited person tried to hand some feed from that house and punished the tourist boy. The boy anyhow has managed a gun and shoot the man and offered his body to the dogs. Later Harry, with the help of that boy, rescued the dead body and take it to the city accompanied by the boy. And there the boy thought that he will be rewarded for his uh, faithfulness for his courageous deed but we see that the police arrested him and the boy was weeping. Here the uh, misconception of the boy is mentioned and in this we have such flashback, a number of flashback that shows the past life of Harry and his experience of hunting, his experience of watching the log house of, her, of his grandfather burned and how the gun was lying in the ashes of the burnt house looked like carcasses. All these things or a innkeeper hanged him because of the inflation after the first world war. So all these topics, he, he had at least 20 topics to write with but he could not write them and he seriously regret for this condition and we see that uh, at the fag end of his life he even asked Helen to take some dictation that means that he still wanted to write something but Helen couldn't take any dictation. Then we see that throughout the story he actually fluctuates between consciousness and unconsciousness. 
between his desire and between his dreams, uh, between his failure and his dreams. And we see later we see that some hyena crossed the open and this hyena also appears as a symbol of death. The hyena for two weeks or for seven days is moving. They also represent the death of Harry. And in the later part we see that in his disillusionment, Harry felt that the hyena has approached at the foot of his cot and he has failed death. The author has personified death as a hyena or as a wild beast or sometimes as a bird or a scavenger like the vulture. And we see that hyena has climbed and he failed, climbed the cot, he was lying and he felt its weight on his chest. And he couldn't produce any sound to move it away. And at that moment, Helen instructed the boys, waiting uh, boys, orderly, to carry the pot inside the tent. At that moment, he could recover his conscience and he felt free. But at the end of the story, we see that when the tent uh, pot was brought inside the tent, Harry went to sleep after taking drink and Helen also went to sleep. In the midnight we see that Helen had awakened hearing some sound, a strange sound of hyenas, as if the beast was crying, that sound is strangely, strangely human. Helen was afraid, anyhow he managed a flashlight and he could not first realize where she was and she was afraid. And later she managed a flashlight and she shone it to the part of the Harry. And there he found that one of his legs is falling from one side, dangling from one side of the cot and she called Harry but Harry did not make any response and finally she realized that Harry was dead. Before this there is another actually flashback. This flashback, all, all other flashbacks are written in Italic but the last flashback in which Harry dreams that some rescue plane has arrived and taking him the plane had only one seat. Tom Tom, the pilot, asked, landed successfully in the safari in the camp, and the boys helped him to take Harry to that plane, and it had only one seat. And it is about to refuel from Arusa, another station, and then they will go to Nairobi. But we see that the plane didn't uh, refuel in Arusa and they were rising up through the wood, through the plain and that finally comes to the top of the mountain. In his dream, Harry saw that he arrived in the western summit, snowy land of the mountain and that is the land of snow. The snow was incredibly white and it was shining in the sunlight. That implies that he is destined to come to this top of the mountain where he had seen the dried and frozen carcass of the leopard. So it is a fulfillment of his dream, of his desire to be immortal. He thought that the leopard has become immortal and in the same way he is destined to be in the top of the mountain and he, in this way he has achieved immortality. And that is the end of this story. And we will discuss some other topics, particularly the main theme of the story, that is the theme of death in our next session. And 
Until then, I will suggest you to stay home and to stay safe. And you yourself will remain safe and you will keep the people of your home safe. Until then, thank you all. Thank you.